This video will describe this simple experiment and the challenges for a startup that will turn this idea into large solar power plant to produce very large amounts of cheap electricity and thermal energy. Of course, installing it on water is not an innovation, and floating solar power plants are one of the answers to the question of what solar energy will look like in the future. Also, this idea of rotating on water is not an innovation, and for example, this solar power plant can rotate according to the movement of the sun across the sky, and it is made up of cells that have this solar panel and these floats. We understand that such rotations are commonly referred to by these terms as other rotations of similar solar panels, which are also one of those types of solar power plants that may dominate in the future instead of motionless solar panels. It is well known that these rotations of solar panels according to the movement of the sun across the sky increase their electricity production by almost one and a half times. But in case of rotation of these mirror dishes, their energy production increases by about three times compared to these motionless mirrors, which are studied on my YouTube channel. One of my recent videos explained that mirror dish trackers become economically feasible when their cost is reduced below the level of $40 per square meter. But unfortunately, we see that current prices are several times higher than that level. This fact is not surprising, because a tracker is made up of this large mass of steel and concrete, this expensive and complex hinge, and the devices for turning into directions. At the same time, we can notice that the installation on water is radically cheaper, and let's take a look at what exactly is its innovation. It is important to draw your attention to the fact that the rotation of a mirror dish from morning to evening should occur simultaneously in two directions, horizontally and vertically. I have already said that this horizontal turn is not an innovation, but the innovation is these vertical turns. More precisely, the innovation is the fact that the vertical turns are performed by these floats. Now I will try to show you how the floats make those vertical turns, and you see that we can change the weight of this water inside the floats. We also understand that this is a very simple and cheap system, and one inexpensive water pump can control several thousand floats simultaneously and equally. It is interesting that this cell could change the vertical inclination through changes in the weight of water inside this float or inside this float, or inside both floats. Now I will show you the rotation of my mirror system during the day, and now it is morning, and these are the time points of one day from morning to evening. These are the same actions, but with this screen, and these are the time points from morning to evening. You have the opportunity to see this vertical angle of the mirror and fix its horizontal angle against the background of this small building. In addition, you can verify that those rotations of the mirror are required to ensure that this part of solar radiation is always located in the same place despite the constant movement of the sun across the sky. So, we must have several thousand similar cells that combine into a similar island, and our solar power plant should consist of several dozen or hundreds of similar islands. Each island has several inexpensive motors to rotate it and one or two pumps to control the weight of water in its floats. It is obvious that this mirror focuses solar radiation into this spot, which leads to its high temperature. My previous videos often described the operation of such receivers, which are located at the focal point of the spot where solar radiation hits a heat transfer fluid. For example, solar power plants of this type take thermal oil with a temperature of almost 300 degrees Celsius, and solar radiation increases the temperature to almost 400 degrees. 
The hot oil is transported to the center of the power plant where a proportion of the thermal energy of the oil produces steam for a turbine with an electric generator. The rest of the energy of the oil heats huge masses of substance inside these heat storages to a temperature of almost 400 degrees and this thermal energy produces steam for the same turbine in the evening and at night. That is why such solar power plants work as well at night as during the day, unlike solar panels that only produce electricity when it is sunny. In addition, one of my old videos described heat storages based on concrete, sand and other cheap materials, which provide the electricity generation for several non-sunny days in a row. Another of my videos described large heat storages based on soil or waste, so that we can generate electricity during non-sunny winters as well as in summer. So, our turbines and heat storages should be located here, on the shore, and we must ensure the circulation of the hot oil between heat storages and the islands, whose millions of mirrors heat the oil during the sun. Let's assume that someone wants to create a startup to build such solar power plants with mirrors and heat storages, and let's look at the problems that the startup will face. My experiments tested three options for the floats, and the startup must choose the best of them. This is the first option, when a pump moves this water, which compresses this air, and its pressure is sufficient to displace the water when needed. I have already shown testing this option. The second option is the same, but here I added holes. Now you will see how these floats are filled with water. This is the water leaving out of the floats, and we see that the rate of the water leaving is noticeably less than the rate of the filling. Now I will show the cause of this phenomenon, and here we see a fountain of the water that leaves the floats, and therefore we understand that the rate of the leaving depends on the difference in height between that fountain and the float. This is testing the second option. Nevertheless, six minutes ago I showed this experiment, where we can notice that I changed the weight of water not only in the rear floats, but also in the front floats. Interesting events happen when a float accidentally dives into water, and we understand that those float holes must be equipped with vertical tubes. Now I am showing the idea of the third float option, and you see that the air inside the glass resists its weight, and this is a similar float with a missing bottom wall. Two similar floats are installed here, and let's take a closer look at the float operation. Now I will remove the air from the float through this hose, and therefore the float goes down. But now we can notice that the float begins to rise, because I increase the amount of the air inside it through the same hose. This air break rules allows us to level the height of all floats and raise the floats as much as possible. This is testing the third float option, and it is important to note that the air pressure inside the floats is very small, because now you see that the floats are rising thanks to the work of my lungs, instead of a compressor. The lowering of the floats occurs when this end of the hose is open, and closing it leads to a stable position of the floats, which is what we are now observing. It is interesting that this type of floats is compact for transportation and storage, just like these floats of that solar island, and now we see the structure of its floats. Many of you have already realized that this structure provides another option for controlling floats by changing the air pressure in these balloons.
Now I am trying to show you the idea of a row of many mirrors using the example of a row of these three mirrors with these three receivers. It is obvious that this is a pipe for the hot oil, which alternately goes through all the receivers of one row and is heated by them. Of course, I checked how this design focuses solar radiation into these spots and these are the moments of one day from morning to evening. We see that the spots are located inside all receivers all day long, from morning to evening. It is obvious that we can install motors for the turning and pumps for the controlling water on each similar row of several dozen mirrors. But many of you would like to radically reduce the number of the motors and the pumps by combining several dozen rows into a similar island, and that startup must find the best method for this combining. We must pay attention to the movement of this spot of solar radiation from the mirror. These movements of the spot are due to the waves that are now being created by me. But we know that high waves are typical in oceans, but not in lakes, and increasing the size of the mirror system will radically reduce this problem. Now I am showing a more serious problem that arises from the wind, the strength of which we can estimate here by the vibrations of the branches. Now you will notice that a gust of the wind can rock my mirror. Nevertheless, here we see that the vertical vibrations of the spot are very small, less than 1 or 2 cm, despite the fact that the wind is now relatively strong and about 90% of sunny hours in my region have lighter winds. We can reduce this wind effect in several ways, including by correctly choosing the location of the center of gravity relative to the front floats. In addition, we understand that the influence of waves and winds can be radically reduced by the rigidity of the rows and the combination of rows into the islands. In general, the influence of waves and winds is part of a broader problem of the accuracy of aiming the spots at receivers. We can notice that the winds reduce the vertical accuracy, but have little effect on the horizontal accuracy, and this is one more reason why the height of the receiver should be greater than its width. This formula leads us to this cost of our solar thermal energy, less than a cent per kilowatt hour, and it is about five times cheaper than the cost of heat from conventional solar collectors, and the temperature is radically higher, more than 300 degrees Celsius. These are targets for that startup regarding the cost of receivers and general equipment of the islands. These requirements allow the price of mirrors to be doubled or tripled compared to wholesale prices for mirror stainless steel sheets, sheets of glass mirrors and other durable mirror surfaces. This cost of the floats and their assembly into island corresponds to the modern cost level for these solar power plants on floats. We can estimate that the cost of floats and their assembly forms about half of the cost of our solar thermal energy, and therefore reducing these costs is the main goal for the startup. You must understand that this is the level of thermal energy production for rare lakes and reservoirs in sunny deserts. At the same time, reservoirs in temperate climates will have lower heat production due to the reduced number of sunny days and the possibility of water freezing in winter. But maybe someone will invent something similar, not for water, but for a flat surface of soil or snow.